We're now having a look at some practical applications of all this material and one of the applications is called line of best fit. What frequently happens is that you collect some information and you want to see whether two variables are related and if they are related by what sort of an equation. Now sometimes that relationship can be quite complicated. It can be a curvilinear relationship or it can be an exponential relationship, uh, a logarithmic relationship or hopefully a linear relationship because they're certainly the easiest to deal with and they're the ones you can deal with because we have worked through some of the problems. Now let's have a look what is actually meant by a line of best fit. It actually is the point uh, of the line that best represents the set of points. Uh, here we've got a set of points, these are observations I've made on two variables and here I've drawn a line through these points that I think best represents those points. Now once I've done that, then I can actually make some predictions. Uh, for instance, I might have a value over here on this x-axis and I want to know what value corresponds to that on the y-axis and I can use that line of best fit. Sometimes it's called the prediction line. So the line can be used to estimate values. Let's go into some problems like this. Here we've got the first one. We've got a line drawn over here. We've got two variables, one P and one Q. Here's the line. Now the first question asks, what is the value for P when Q is equal to 5? So I select the value for Q equals 5. I go to the line and I see what value of P best represents that point. Let's have a look. I find from that, that if P equals 4, or then Q is equal to 5, sorry, then P is equal to 4. I put arrows on the line to indicate what direction I'm making my estimation. In this case, I want to know what Q is when the P value equals 6. So I would start with 6 and then go across horizontally and I find uh, from the line then that I can estimate the Q value as to be between 7 and 8, about 7.5. When we conduct an experiment, the data we collect is called empirical. Now, how, what do we do when we have empirical data and we suspect that a line passes through a set of points? Well, you do the same thing as we've done before, except that the numbers are generally a little bit more awkward and some of the points don't quite lie on the line. You take two appropriate points and you do the same thing. Find the gradient, find the intercept. I've got the procedure written up here. Select two appropriate points, you obtain the gradient using the same formula as before. You use one point to get the B value and you write the equation as Y equals MX plus B. Let's go straight into a problem. Uh, I've collected some information here about the mass and the length of cylinders with identical cross sections and I've measured them uh, as follows. Now we suspect that the values of L and M are linearly related. In other words, that they would be of a form M equals gradient times L plus an intercept. And that is the difficulty with these type of problems, that you don't always deal with X and Y, but you have different variables like X and Y. And here, of course, we've got an A and a B as well, A standing for gradient and B standing for uh, the Y intercept. Okay, we select two points. Now I've selected the first and the last, but you can take other points. If one point is completely way off, then you should not use it. Perhaps a little sketch of the points will give you an idea if there is a failure that is way out. I have checked those points are approximately on the line. We use the formula for the gradient, difference in the y's becomes 20.7, difference in the axis 7.5. 2.76 if I uh, divide that, then we substitute that into the equation y1 equals mx1 plus b to get the value for b and that comes to 0 0.1 which will enable us then to write the equation m equals 2.76l plus 0 0.1.